She ought to be on this train. I hope so. She's sure leading us a merry chase. Mr. Again. Any press, city, taxi? 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 Any press, city? Taxi? Taxi? The Knickerbocker Hotel. I said to the Knickerbocker Hotel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, George. Have you seen Miss Bolton? Is she coming back here, sir? <laughs> I understand how you feel. Well, I'll wait. She may show up. She's a wild one, all right. Who? June Bolton. Have you seen this? No. I haven't got my glasses. You read it to me. America's madcap number one again eludes police. June Bolton is being sought by police for questioning. Oh, it's a shame that girl's so wild. Checked in yet? No. Say, would you uh, would you know Dick Clayton if you saw him? Sure. That's him right over there. Oh, thanks. Okay. Hello, Clayton. Glad to see you. <laughs> I guess you don't remember me, huh? No, I don't. I met you a long time before you practiced ball. When you played your last game of football. I don't seem to be able to place you. I. Well, I can understand that. <laughs> you see, I was just one of the hundred thousand spectators. Oh. Uh. June Bolton still rates front page, don't you? Yeah, so it seems. You handle the legal affairs for the family, don't you? Yes. Is it true that Mrs. Bolton wired you to be a bodyguard to her daughter? Young man, I don't wish to appear rude, but what business is that of yours? I'm a newspaper man. You don't tell me. Say, you and June have been friends for a long time, haven't you? Yes, we've known each other since we were kids. Uh, in love? Don't you think that's a little personal? <laughs> Anything you say, Clayton. Uh, Excuse me, I have to phone the paper. If you see June, tell her I'm looking for her. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, nice seeing you. <laughs> yeah. How are you, George? Quite nicely, Miss Bolton, thank you. Uh, Mr. Clayton is waiting for you. What, again? I've received a radiogram from your mother. She wants me to... I know. You're to watch her precious daughter and see that she doesn't make a fool of herself. I'm a little late for that. Listen to me, Dick Clayton. I'm old enough to take care of myself. You certainly haven't proved it. I don't have to prove anything to you. Let's not stage a scene here. We can discuss all this in the quiet of your room. Well, discuss it with yourself. Wait a minute. Why 
it too, miss. Oh, just drive. Did Clayton go? Yes, he just left. Following Miss Bolton. Oh, is she here too? Yes. Well, which way they go? I haven't the slightest idea. This is a pleasant surprise, Miss Bolton. You know me? And who doesn't? Say, I'd like to get away from here. Well, that's easy. Stop this car, stop this car. You want to see me? No, but I do want to see this young lady. Well, our feelings certainly aren't mutual. You're going back to the hotel with me. That's what you think. I seem to be intruding. Oh, not at all. Make him leave me alone. Now, listen, young man. I haven't time. Come on. You're coming with me. Don't treat me as if I were a child. For two cents, I'd put you over my knee and whale a tar out of you. You can't talk to Miss Bolton like that. No. no. Let go. Well, I won't. You will. Is that news hound still around? He left about five minutes ago, sir. Said he was going to the office. Good. Get out. I should slap your face. I've had just about enough of you, Dick Clayton. And I've had too much of you. Sound like they're married. Well, I can't laugh at that. You're going into that hotel and stay put until your mother takes you off my hands. And suppose I refuse. Then I'll carry you right through the lobby. Well, start carrying. Big bully, that's just what you are. I don't like this any better than you do. Your mother's lawyer, a nursemaid, that's what I am. Mother comes back, I'll have her fire you. That suits me perfectly. As a matter of fact, if I weren't so fond of her, I wouldn't be here right now. June, I don't understand you. You were snooty enough as a kid, but, well, you seem to be growing worse with age. I guess it's just a case of too much money, huh? You know, Dick, there are times when I don't understand myself. Oh, I don't want to cause you and Mother any worry, and whether you believe it or not, I do appreciate your friendly interference. Do you really mean that? Yes. But, well, you use such poor judgment. Right now, the police are looking for you to ask you a few simple questions. And what do you do? Give them a chase. They haven't caught me yet. Uh, June, that's not the idea, dear. You oh, I don't feel like arguing. Do you mind? No, I... <laughs> You don't really think I've grown worse with age now, do you? Not exactly, no. Well, June, I had no idea you felt this way about me. I, I don't! You little faker! Let me alone! You Your mother said to keep you in these rooms. Now you're going to stay here. Uh, you don't mind if I freshen up a little bit, uh, do you, Mr. Clayton? You can do whatever you like as long as you stay in these rooms. You're so sweet to me, Mr. Clayton. You're welcome, Miss Bolton.
Hi, Clayton. Oh, so it's you. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Where's June? Uh, she's in there. I get it. I'll wait. Sit down. <laughs> Make yourself to home. Thanks. <laughs> Is it true that you rescued June Bolton from that notorious Bert Graham? No, it isn't. Well, then why did you sack him in the jaw? You don't mean to tell me the fellow I hit was Bert... Oh, then it is true. Yes, I suppose so. Well, that's swell. I wrote the story and the paper will be on the streets in a few minutes. And there was a big chance that my information was incorrect. Say, don't you think the newspapers are playing up Miss Bolton just a little too much? Well, why don't you answer me? I'm thinking. June! Hey, what's the matter? What's the matter? June! What's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. I don't know. June, open the door. Maybe she fell and hit her head on the tub. Here, give me a hand here. Come on. June! June! Oh, where did she go? What a story. What a story. Billionaire swims away from bodyguards. She didn't go out there. There's no pirate escape. Well, maybe she got out along the ledge there. I'll take a what? look. What? Yeah, that's the way she made it along the ledge. What a story. What a story. Oh. Never can get up a fire escape. Well, then she'd get out the front way. You think of everything. I have to. Look, it's her all right. We got you, Miss Bolton. You're under arrest. Miss Bolton, regardless of how much money you have, you can't run this department. Why you ran away is beyond me. All we wanted you for was questioning in regard to the whiting accident. You were served with a subpoena, which you completely disregarded. The first thing you know, you're going to get yourself into serious trouble. You talk exactly like someone I know. It might be a wise thing if you'd forget that you're June Bolton and act like a human being. So you brought me here so you could insult me, is that it? I can see it's a waste of time to talk to you. You'd better get in touch with your lawyer. What? I'd rather go to jail first. What are you in for, kid? Not for long, I assure you. You act like you've never been in one of these joints before. I haven't. Well, don't worry, kid. We'll get out of here. I'm a dame what's got influence. Do you mean you're willing to help me? Sure. Why not? Do you know who I am? No. Feel like confessing? You're the first person who ever offered to do anything for me. Just on account of, well, me. Now, don't go melodramatic. You're a nice kid. Don't get discouraged. You'll get a break someday. I'm really not up on jail etiquette, but I suppose I should ask what you're in for. Assault and battery. No. The guy I was out with last night forgot to tell me he was married. Sort of slipped his mind, I guess. I hit a man, too. Pal. Here's something for you. That's swell. A friend of mine left $100 with the captain. How much is my bail? $50. Pay it. Oh, and take out for my girlfriend, too. Oh, well, I've forgotten all about bail. I can take care of both of ours. <laughs> this one's on me. Next time, it's your treat. Well, I haven't any special place to go. Oh, you poor kid. You better come along with me. Thank you. To the Red Mill Cafe, driver. And she climbed down the building like a human fly. Some story, huh? I don't know what to come of Clayton. I guess he's out looking for the girl. Yeah. Well, I'll be around in a few minutes. Uh, right now, I got a pressing appointment. Okay, boss. So long. Hey, operator. 
What about my suit? What do you think I'm gonna do? Sit around here all day like a fan dancer? Hello, Captain. How are you? Oh, hello, Clayton. I'm looking for June Bolton. Have any of your men picked her up? Yes. She left here about 20 minutes ago. A girl bailed her out. A girl? Who? Well, let's see. Her name is uh, Hazel White. She's an entertainer at the Red Mill Cafe. Thanks, Captain. No, no, let me pay for this. You better save your dough, kid. You may need it sometime. Here you are, driver. Keep the change. you to go on, isn't it? Okay. Watch my number, will you, honey? Mr. <laughs> Walton, you'll be my guest. I'd love to. Harry. See what Miss Walton will have. Hi, Hazel. How's the jail been? <laughs> Swell again. Thanks for that bail money. Oh, don't mess that, honey. There's plenty more where that came from. If Graham doesn't get too hoggish. Having trouble? Not yet. Keep it in the clear, Steve. Say, where's Steve? He's out there someplace. Take that stuff to McNally's? Yes, and got the cash, too. Did Graham say anything about giving us a bigger split? I'm getting tired of doing the dirty work. Well, I'd keep my mouth shut if I were you. Well, the boss is getting fed up with your squawking. And I'm fed up with him, too. That will be all. Thank you, miss. Yeah. Yes, this is my lucky day. Well, it certainly hasn't been mine. Hey, uh, what's the name of that young fellow that raised such a rumpus? I'd rather not talk about him. You know, I'm not in the habit of being on the losing end. Neither am I. But he can't treat me as if I were a child. Who? Dick Clayton. Oh, I did tell you his name after all, didn't I? What does this uh, Clayton do? Well, he's a lawyer. As much as I hate to admit it, a pretty good one. Mother engaged him to look after her business, and particularly me. Uh, now I understand his attitude when he caught us together in the car. I thought I'd interrupted a lover's quarrel. A lover's quarrel? Yes. I hate him. That's good news. You pardon me a moment. There's a gentleman waiting to see me in my office. Hurry back. That's an order. Any of you boys know Dick Clayton? What's his racket? Law. A cop? No, an attorney. Never heard of him. Say, is that the guy that used to play football? Yes, that's right, he did. You know him? Well, I guess I'd recognize him. You're elected. So I gotta do some more of your dirty work. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Hazel White will now entertain you with a lot of interpretation of the latest Thanks, please. Miss White! Just wait. How many 
you a party, sir. I'm looking for Miss Hazel White. Is she here? Yes, sir. She's on now. Again. June. Now listen. Oh, past. Past. You're coming with me. I'm not going Leave to stand. Leave her alone. What? Oh. I've come to take you home. Hi, you pal. Say, I got some money back in the dressing room. There's more than enough to pay my bail. Oh, your bail's all taken care of. This time, it's my treat. So long, good. Come on, get out, get out. Take that cab ahead. What? I ordered it for you. Go on, beat it, beat well, it. Well, I thought there was... Never mind what you thought. Get going. Come on, get going. Grams. Hurry. Listen, operator. Don't think I'm impatient, but I gotta get my suit. Fun's fun. I've been sitting here for three hours. Send up somebody's suit. I gotta get out of here. You understand it? Are you still here? What's the matter, Clayton? Forget to duck? No, it was an accident. So was my unexpected bath, I suppose. No, not exactly. You know, I might have hurt myself or got water on the brain. Water on the what? On the, on the, on the head. Oh. That can't be my suit so soon. I hope I haven't held you up, sir. <laughs> oh, no, no, not at all. The uh, suit belongs to him. I trust I didn't interrupt a poker game. Oh, no, sir. We were playing Pinnacle. Here you are, son. Oh, you playing? Why not? Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. That Bolton girl give you that china? No, she didn't. By the way, where is that billion-dollar baby? I haven't the slightest idea. I know how they train spirited horses, but I can't imagine putting a saddle on June Bolton. I don't think anyone's ever going to tame her. You're a funny guy, Clayton. Why? Strikes me that you could handle legal affairs of the family from your office. Then you wouldn't have to chase her all over the country. I'm not chasing her. I'm merely trying to... Yeah, I know. Did it ever occur to you that if you'd quit pursuing her, she'd be better off? Why? What do you mean? Well, the way I figured it out, she gets in most of her trouble trying to get away from you. Well, that's a lot. That must be the operator telling me my suit's here. I'll answer it. Hello. 
Oh, oh, hello, Mrs. Bolton. Where are you? My boat just docked. Yes. Is June there? Uh, no, no, she isn't, but I'm sure she'll be back presently. Uh, do you want me to pick you up? No. All right. Well, you won't have any trouble finding a cab. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's all right, yes. No, no she's been behaving splendidly. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure she will have returned by the time you get here. All right. Goodbye, Mrs. Bolton. Goodbye. So you'd even lie for it. Well, I see no reason for worrying Mrs. Bolton any more than is necessary. <laughs> Caption. Lawyer frames clever alibi. Say, you don't live in this place, do you? Yes. George, pay the driver and keep the change. Thank you very much, Miss Bolton. Is your name Bolton? Yes. Not the June Bolton. That's me. Guess I'm a little bit out of my class. Don't worry. I'll do my best not to humiliate you. Come on. Say, I didn't know he was a friend of yours or I wouldn't have hit him. I didn't say he was a friend of mine. I just said I'd known him for a long time. Oh, I see. He's not hot on the optics, you know that? Yes, he knows it too. It riles me the way he struts around bossing people. <laughs> then you don't go for him, eh? Absolutely not. Who are you trying to kid? What do you mean? Just this. When a dame tries so hard to hate a guy, it's a sure sign she's in love with him. Ridiculous. Will you please get out of my sight? I'm sorry about that eye. That's the least of my troubles. I want to talk to you. Say, I don't know who you are or what you're doing around here. Would you mind if we look the place over? No, not a bit. Now listen, June. Your mother is coming. Oh, leave me alone! Now, June, please. Your mother will be here in a few minutes. I talked with her on the telephone, and I told her you were behaving yourself. You don't have to make apologies for me, Dick Clayton. Ha! Get out of here! Get out of my sight! Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm through. You can get yourself another lawyer. That's the best news I've heard in a long time. Send your bill in the morning, and you'll receive a check. That settles our account. He socked her. No! Yeah. What's up? I detest him. How black in his other eye. No. So you're the one that gave him the black eye, huh? Who are you? I'm a newspaper man. And am I going to give you a swell front page break? Here now, here. Hey. Good taxi. 2025 Orange Grove, please. What? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bolton. Welcome home. Oh. Hello. Oh, Richard. Oh, I do feel so much better about you after having talked with you. I'm glad. Is she in her room? Yes. Well, uh, I won't keep you any longer. You seem to be in a hurry. <laughs> Only I do want you to know how much I appreciate what you've done. It was a pleasure. <laughs> well, Mrs. Bolton, I'll take care of that. Run along. Oh, thank you. Good night. Richard. Good night, Mrs. Bolton. Orange Grove address. Dick Clayton can't do this to me. I'd like to know who he thinks he is. Don't get yourself all riled up, kid. What's a little sock in the kisser? You can take it. I don't have to take anything from him. Maybe he's come back to knock your teeth in. Open that door. Uh, mother. June. I didn't expect you so soon, Mother. I thought you were someone else. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, June, I am so glad to see you. <gasps> Let me look at you. Oh, you're lovely, June. More lovely than ever. Oh, well, my mother, Miss White. Pleased to you meet do? you. Uh, oh, well, Hazel's a dancer, Mother. She didn't have a chance to change her costume. Yeah, well, the cops didn't give me a chance. Cops? Oh, <laughs> Hazel's always joking. She can think of the funniest things to say. <laughs> well, that's all right with me. I love comical people. <laughs> Let me help you, Mother. Thank you. Suppose you had your trunk sent over. Yes, dear. She made it out that window. Why can't I?
What was that? Uh, it sounded like a walrus to me. Walrus? Yeah, you know, one of those sea lions that swim around. You know, we have an act next door. They yes, walrus. You know. Well, it's too bad about poor Steve. He was such a nice guy. Yeah, it's a shame he didn't know enough to do as he was told. <laughs> well, maybe Dad taught him a lesson. That'll be enough out of you. Chuck. Steve McDonald. Yeah. He was a great friend. <laughs> Treated me swell. He was the guy that sent me the bail money last night. Oh, there, there, darling. It's tough, I know. Oh, gee. He didn't give Steve a chance. And you have an idea who killed him? Yeah. Who? On a Bert Graham's mob. Not the Bert Graham that runs the Red Mill. Sure. Has he a mob? Why, of course he has. Like all racketeers. It's rather hard to believe. He seems so pleasant, refined, and very interesting. What sort of a racket is he in? All sorts. I'm a very curious person. What do you mean? Hmm? I'd like to find out about him and all his rackets. Maybe I could learn if he's responsible for your friend's death. Hey, you better stay away from that guy. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Trouble? <laughs> I can see the headlines now. June Bolton knocks racketeer for a loop. <laughs> And you're liable to get your name in the death notices. When do you go to the Red Mill again? I got a rehearsal this afternoon. I'll go with you. I've got a little something to rehearse, too. Your visit is quite unexpected, Miss Bolton. Needless to say, you've made me very happy by dropping over. The answer is very simple. I wanted to see you. Guess I'd better get to work. Well, forget about it for a few days, Hazel. You're too upset. You and Steve were quite friendly, weren't you? He was a swell pal. Did he ever discuss his business with you? No, he didn't. Have you any idea who killed him? Oh, I think the newspapers hit it on the head. It must have been the work of competitors. You see, I'm in what people call a racket. Yes, I've heard rumors. I'm sorry, Miss Bolton. I'd like to be in a position to create a good impression. I think you're a very charming person. I guess I strayed off the straight and narrow path because I craved excitement, thrills. I can understand that all right. I feel very sorry about Steve, but anyone in our profession learns to expect most anything. Red Hogan and his men got a little bit envious, that's all. Then you really think Hogan's gang did it? Absolutely. Well, we might as well get going. You'll pardon us, won't you? Have you a car? No, we came in a taxi. I'd be very glad to take you home. That is, if you're not afraid of running into Red Hogan and some of his boyfriends. <laughs> I think a little excitement might do me good. Listen, Hogan, you better watch your step. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm not taking the blame for anybody. Chances are the police are looking for you right now. Well, I'll get Graham first.
the girls. Don't worry, I'll be careful not to hit them. Madcap Eris rushes wounded gangs to the hospital. Miss June Bolton, oft times referred to as America's Madcap Number One, befriended the most notorious of our underworld characters. This young millionaireist rushed Bert Graham to the hospital. The racketeer refused to name his assailant. I made the headlines again. I don't know why the newspapers play up the little things you do. Mm, I wish we could keep this from Mother. Here she comes now. Hey, dear. Hey, dear. Oh, good morning, Good darling. morning, dear. <laughs> good morning, Hazel. Good morning, Mrs. Bolton. My, you girls certainly look as though you'd had a grand night's sleep. We did, Mother. You know, June, I think Hazel's a good influence for you. I'm only afraid she'll live too quiet a life. Oh, I heartily approve of that. My, I'm getting hungry. I think I'll dress and go downstairs and get a bite to eat. Oh, but you mustn't go out, Mother Darling. Why not? Well, you don't look well. What? You've circles under your eyes, and your lips are purple. Oh, you're not feeling well, are you, darling? I, I thought I was. You've a fever. You have a fever. Uh, let me see your tongue. <gasps> it's coated. Overcoated. Uh Oh, I, well, maybe I'd better sit down. I, I do feel a little faint. No, I think you'd better go back to bed, dear, and rest. Oh. I'll have a nice breakfast sent up for you. Well, maybe you're right. I'm not as young as I used to be. And <laughs> Honolulu was a bit strenuous. Come on, Mrs. Bolton. You'll be all right in a week or so. Thank you, dear child. Funny, I have a good appetite. I'll have a nice, substantial meal sent up to you. And have them send up the morning paper, will you, dear? Yeah. Yes, Mother. <laughs> I think I can manage. Okay, dokie. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is Miss Bolton. Oh, he does? Tell him I'll be right over. Where are you going now? To see Bert Graham. Uh-huh. Looking for more trouble, huh? Oh, not exactly. But yesterday's shooting convinced me that your friend Steve was killed by Hogan's gang. I think Bert Graham can help the cause along. You'll take care of the breakfast, won't you? Sure. Hey, hey, how about the newspaper? Oh. Tell him to send up last week's. Mm, good luck. I sure am well influenced for you. Room service, please. Say, you are looking fine. I'm so glad Hogan didn't get you. Oh, I never had so much fun in all my life. You're a peculiar girl, June. Uh, I mean, Miss Bolton. June is sufficient. Well, June, as I was saying, you're a very interesting person. I thought you said I was a peculiar one. Well, that's practically the same. Peculiar people are interesting. You know, you and I are very much alike in one respect. We both crave excitement. Then you approve of me? A thousand percent. <laughs> well, you're the first person I've ever known who did. We could have a lot of fun together if you'd only tell me I could see you once in a while. You know, I'd even reform. Appealing to my mother instincts, are you? I'd like to appeal to all of your instincts. I think you're grand. How's Hazel feeling? 
Oh, she's fine. The underworld's kind of rough on the gangsters, sweetheart. As a rule, they become too talkative. I don't think Hogan will have to worry about Hazel. Well, I better be going. I'll be out of here in a few days. Will you call me? Without fail. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thanks for dropping over. All right, Chuck. She's gone. You're doing all right for yourself. Unless I miss my guess, I'll take her for plenty. What about Clayton? You're elected. How Graham does it. What a babe. This is our chance to even scores with him. <laughs> I'll personally take care of her myself. How do you feel now, Mrs. Bolton? Worse. Oh, dear. Much worse. Where did June go? Oh, maybe that's her now. What do you want? I want to... I must have caught cold in that tub. It serves you right. The next time you get in my hair, I'll drown you. Hey, I got business here. You only think you have. Who is this? The Muller Brush Man. Don't you believe her? I'm a reporter. Who showed the gentleman in, Hazel? No. <laughs> I hope you'll excuse me for asking you in here like this, but... Uh, I'm a very curious person, particularly about reporters. I suppose you've come to ask me about my trip? No, 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 no. <coughs> Pardon me. Surely my daughter isn't in any trouble again. Oh, Mrs. Bolton, maybe I'd better talk to him outside, huh? Uh, you're very considerate, Hazel, but uh, I'm feeling much better now. What was it you were about to say? Well, I guess she hasn't got herself in any mess since yesterday. Yesterday? Why, of course you know she was with Graham when he was shot. I do not. And who is Graham? Is there anything about it in that paper? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well... Oh. Oh. She's incorrigible. Yeah. Impossible. Yes. Irrepressible, irresponsible. Yeah. Oh! Oh, what are you going to do now? Well, I'll do! I'm going to see Dick Clayton. Listen, Richard, you must have a talk with June. She simply winds me around her little finger. And judging from past experiences, I'm afraid she won't pay any attention to me. Oh. Hasn't your daughter informed you that I'm no longer handling the affairs of the Bolton family? No. Oh, but that's beside the point. Richard, you've known June since she was a little girl. You can't stand by and see her ruin her life. Well, I'd do anything I could to help, really, Mrs. Bolton, but June seems to resent me more than anyone else. You know, I got a hunch she's in love with you. Nothing would make me any happier than to have you and June marry. Mrs. Bolton, that's impossible. The first thing we know, she's going to get mixed up with those racketeers. Gonna be. <laughs> She is. I don't think it'll do any good, but I'm going to talk to her about that. Oh, thanks so much. Have you any idea where she is? I think she went to the Hollywood Hospital to see Bert Graham. Bert Graham? Oh, well, I'll rest here for a while. If you Make yourself at home, Mrs. Bolton. Thanks so much. Why don't you get my to yourself, Clayton, and let her alone? That's my business. Did she say where she was going when she left here? Yes, to her hotel. Thanks. Operator, get me Hempstead, 3004. Hello? Yeah, this is Chuck. Clayton's on his way over to June Bolton's hotel. You know what to do. Yeah, but how am I going to get in? 
You read the papers, don't you? Remember, she crawled out of her bathroom window? That's the way you get in. Oh, yeah. All right. Everybody's gone. That's funny. Hello? Yes, this is Miss Bolton. Who? I didn't get the name. Yes, I'm alone. Oh, the manager. Come right up. I know what I'd do if I was in Richard's place. What? I'd lamb the tar out of her. Whoa. So you believe in treating them rough, huh? Well, I've had pretty good luck so far. Well, Sonny boy, I'm afraid your luck is going to change. What do you mean? We'll go into that later. Oh, by the way, you're not married, are you? I should say not. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Will you children take me home? Certainly. You're not the manager. You're Red Hogan. Sam, my business won't take me long. Why do you want to kill me? I haven't done anything to you. No, but Graham has. You stopped us from getting him yesterday. And you know too much. Now, what were you saying? Why are you so anxious to get even with Graham? He tried to pin something on me that he'd done himself. What are you talking about? Steve McDonald. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I saw one of Graham's men ditch, ditch the gun that killed Steve, and after he went away, I, I dug it up. Stay where you are. Well, what are you going to do with me? I'll trade that gun you found for your freedom. Oh, just a faithful sweetheart, eh? No, I'm going to turn Graham over to the police. Well, you've got it. This? Yeah. Can I go now? Yes. So long, Toots. Good luck, Hogan. If you ever decide to go into a racket professionally, look me up, will you? <laughs> Thank you. I like the way you work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, you don't. Now don't start anything. Graham's gun. We need this more than you do. Well, I guess that settles that. Not so fast. I think Graham would like to have a little talk with you. Come on. You don't mind if I get my hat, do you? No, all right. 
Thank you. But no tricks. Now, will you tell me what this is all about? I have nothing to say. What's he doing here? I don't know exactly, but I'm going to turn him over to the police. Is Miss Bolton safe? Quite. I'll take him down to the station for you. Thanks. Come on. Officer. Huh? You better turn these in, too. All right. Come on. I knew you'd get in a jam. But Dick, You'll I... never be able to excuse yourself for getting tangled up with a lot of gangsters. Whatever happens, you've certainly got it coming. Don't you yell at me, Dick Clayton. What? I'll yell at you all I want to. You're just the type to rub it in. Oh, I hate you. Oh, what do I care? I wouldn't waste my breath on you. Well, then stop shouting. You're a public enemy. That's what you are. Get out of here. I never want to see you again. Of course, you know Graham's a racketeer, a killer. You'll be put on the spot. It's for me to worry about. Someday somebody's going to tame you. The man doesn't live who can tame me. Oh, no? What are you going to do? Dick Clayton, have you gone crazy? Let me go! Let me go! Will you leave me alone? Let me out! Not until I've had my say. Stop it! Why do you think I'm neglecting my business to try and help you? Because I love you, I tell you, I love you. Did you hear what I said? I love you. When I think of you even looking at another man, it drives me crazy. Why do you think I want you to stay out of the papers and lead a normal life? Because I love you. No, don't you hurt I've loved you since we were kids, and I love you even more now. I love you so much, I can't stand it. Did you hear what I said? I love you. Richard! Oh, she's in there. Something. I've got some unfinished business to take care of. You phone headquarters, will you? You'll phone, won't you? Why, sure. Oh, thanks. Wait a minute. You may need this. What? I don't understand. Are you sure? Yes. Did you mean everything you said in there? Absolutely. Well, why didn't you tell me before? <laughs> 